Thanks, Don. I think I got that wrong, too. <laughs> there are a lot of uh, streets for good reason. I hope that uh, a lot of other families actually have the same lineage, because it's a treasure. Um, so uh, I uh, have been uh, the child of a camper, the grandson of a camper. I've been a camper myself. Uh, and then uh, for the last eight years, uh, I've been Wow, right out of the gate. <laughs> this is like that ESPN, you know, where they sign you up and then they want you to cry by the 28th minute. Um, all right, so um, I, I've had two kids here uh, starting about eight years ago, uh, and so I've been thinking quite a bit about what camp means to me um, from a lot of places and a lot of vantage points. Uh, when I showed up at Chile in the mid-80s, um, there were kids from all over. As, as Jeff said, uh, I was actually uh, grew up in Boulder, Colorado, and there was only two of us from Boulder, if I remember right. Uh, and there were probably less than five or so kids in our units from, uh, from Colorado itself. Uh, the kids were really from, from really strange places like New Orleans with funny accents. Uh, and they were from Los Angeles and they had these you know, crazy hair with like, you know, stripes through it and they listened to bands like the Psychedelic Furs. And, uh, and that was just an amazing, you know, different experience. Um, there was also this whole cadre of people from this place in Kansas called Overland Park. Uh, it was like there was like this little chili waterfall out there and these people would show up from there every summer. Uh, and there were a lot of Texans, uh, and, and for those that were alive in the 80s, all the Texans showed up with Rambo knives, um, which was great, uh, and I think that's when we created the valuables pouch, because uh, that was the 1980s version of the iPhone, I think, we weren't supposed to have it on camp. Uh, there was also a guy my age uh, named Jeff Cheely, uh, and he rocked a, an amazing, uh, uh, ep uh, epic mullet. Uh, <laughs> it's different now, but I will tell you, it was mullet. <laughs> and it was a party in the back. <laughs> so this group, in a, a few short weeks, uh, figured out, uh, from all over the country, all over the world, uh, figured out, um, with different ideals, different values, different backgrounds, figured out how to come together and have an environment that worked for everybody. Um, we had disagreements and differences, absolutely, um, but we trusted and supported each other based on a common set of expectations. You guys heard about it last night, you've heard it from all the campers here. The Chile Code of Living uh, is a way to really kind of set a foundation of who and how you should operate in a functional world. And we need that more than ever. And that's what camp means for me. When you come up the drive, there's a sign that says, uh, future leaders at play. And that's absolutely what's happening here, and that's amazing. Uh, last night was uh, the final recognition campfire. Uh, I'm confused by it, but uh, we'll get over it. And we'll adjust. Um, but uh, there are a lot of awards. Um, it's a wonderful celebration. Um, it's really a lot of fun to see it. Um, but I want to say that not everybody's going to ride out of here tomorrow with their name carved on the wall in, uh, in Hayaha. Um, they're not going to be, uh, you know, essentially uh, on a little dial in the Sky High Lodge. They're not going to be down, you know, their name's not going to be on, uh, on the lower Sky High. Um, and while I earned my hiking patch here at Chile, um, which has created a love of hiking uh, for me and my immediate family um, that I, is insuppressible, um, my name isn't on the wall anywhere here at Chile. So uh, I'm a third generation camper and my name's on the wall. And as you guys heard last night, that uh, you get your key at different times and my name's not here. Uh, what's interesting about it, though, is I hear names throughout the winter. Um, so I, I see Instagram and Snapchat posts over the shoulder, uh, and I hear people named Bobby, and Anya, and Osha, and Sarah, and Ollie, and the Manhart brothers, and I hear that all winter long. And whenever we go on vacation, our son Jack, he finds a way to find somebody he went to camp with. And we spend a day with him, whether in New York City, skating through Central Park on skateboards, or in Philadelphia, where he goes out and plays at someone's pool in the suburbs. Or even last winter, we went to Hawaii, he found somebody and spent the day, and they found some secret beaches. And that's amazing. My wife and I have also found some really dear friends. They support our kids. <coughs> and really, Should have a glass of water up here. <laughs> In really amazing ways. Camp wouldn't be possible without these people. So I've come to really understand that 
through the many wonderful people we've got to know at Chile as a camper and then as an adult are not necessarily on a wall somewhere. They're carved inside the heat. And that's what's awesome. And that's what camp means to me. Uh, watching our kids grow up over the last eight years um, has been really a phenomenal experience. Uh, what they get from deciding what they are going to do and then going out and doing it themselves is simply amazing. Our daughter Frances, she was just out here a minute ago, she was terrified of horses a month ago. And she decided she wanted to do something about that, and she did. Jack, our son, uh, he's a kilt this year, um, he was a homesick mess eight years ago. Uh, I honestly believe there's probably two counselors out there that have lost their will to live. <laughs> And I, I think I can name him, actually. <laughs> but this last winter, when he was selected for the kilt program, he said he wanted to go back to Lower Sky High because he wanted to pay it back. These are experiences that are preparing you for life. Because you chose to hike the mountain, because you put yourself out there at all camp at the skit, because you tried something new, and because you fell off that horse. Camp is not the destination. I know that. It's the beginning. It's a month-long orientation class to prepare you for the ups and downs of life back home. And every camper in this chapel is now better prepared. So I'm going to ask the campers to do this. Before you leave tomorrow, is it tomorrow? <laughs> not sure. <laughs> Make sure you pull out your Chile compass. Maybe it's in here. Maybe it's actually a compass. When I was here, you actually had to get one. Maybe you still do. Um, maybe it's your BK on your bedpost. Find a special place at camp that means something to you and calibrate to your true north. What does camp mean to you? Then, this is important, when you get back home, I want to challenge you to join the robotics club because you want to, even if your friends don't. I want you to include the person that's always excluded. And when you don't get asked to the homecoming dance, or if you don't make the varsity soccer team, or when you be feel betrayed by a friend, find your compass. And picture yourself at your favorite place at camp. And remember that you faced these big challenges before, and you hiked it, you rode it, you climbed it, you paddled it, you biked it, you made it. And you've got this too. This is what camp means to me. In order to earn your hiking patch at Chile, you're required to know the names of mountains. For me, chapel was a good time to ignore people like me and memorize these. <laughs> so, on the left, you can't see it. They put that mountain up since I was here last. <laughs> you've got Chapin, then you've got Chiquita, Ypsilon, Fairchild, Higgs, Mummy, and then the little ones are Dunraven and Dickinson. You know Ypsilon because it's got a Y in it in the snow, for those that don't know. That's it right there. Beautiful. I've not been a camper for over 30 years, but I still find that when I need to ground myself, when I need to make a hard decision, when things get scary, I imagine myself right over here. There's a guy with a hat on before. It's right where the, the, the sea hat is, right there. I sit on that ledge, so there's the hat right there. I imagine myself right on that ledge. I'm 15 years old. I'm wearing a white Oxford button-down shirt, and some Levi's, and some rad Varney sunglasses. <laughs> Alex, Chip, Chris, Randy, Will, Ellie, they're all there. And now they're joined by David and Betty, Jeff, my wife Susie. And those two. We're all just kids from New Orleans, or Los Angeles, or Overland Park, and we all just have the crazy hair, and we listen to the weird music. I stop and I repeat to myself, Chapin, Chiquita, Ypsilon, Fairchild, Higgs, Mummy, Chapin, Chiquita, Ypsilon, Fairchild, Higgs, Mummy, and I say to myself, I've got this. This is what it means to me. Thanks.